there was this one time at like a PAX or something where someone just like was walking by a, our booth and just saw Octodad and was just like totally repulsed. Just like, ugh, Octodad, no thank you. Just like yelled that. Cause there were definitely times, you know, with Octodad where it was like, oh, you know, everything will be fine and it'll be great and it'll come out and do well. And then there's other times where it's like, you know, we're all doomed. If you don't get something like that every once in a while, you're probably not doing anything as new as, as what we are trying to do. I mean, I can't really speak to everybody because I can't know uh, what goes on in everyone's head, but I know for myself personally, yes, I felt a great deal of dread. We are pushing ourselves and doing something that is harder than what we did last time. I had a couple of, uh, I'll say, episodes where I expressed my dread extremely loudly. Um, We're really lucky to be in the right time at the right in the right time at the right, in the right place at the right time. We had plenty of ideas to do more with Octodad, but we wanted to do everything we could to do something new and different because that was the whole point of the company in the first place. I don't know how to, I don't even know if we're, you know, gonna continue to, to, to know what is the right decision. It's hard to tell how much of that is luck and how much of that is like, we did something good. It was certainly an uncomfortable time for me, uh, and I would prefer not to do it again if I could help it. We want to create joy. I also like want to do something small to make the world better rather than worse. Otherwise, I guess we would have just taken any money we had made and gone our separate ways. So that's probably why, why you know, making something that has heart is important to me. stressful bit at this point is just that there is a lot to do and there are still questions that haven't been answered. We, we haven't done UI yet. Nobody on the team wants to do it. Uh, we need to find someone who will do it or figure out what our UI looks like. It's, I think you can do that the first time you catch the bug. You could. I just don't know how well, disruptive that'll be. I mean, I mean it will be the first time you catch the first bug. Yeah. And then from then on, just be like, new journal entry. So that's a big giant question hanging over us that we've got to solve, uh, that we're not super interested in solving. The point of the, of the Bugopedia yes. is to s have the information about how to catch the bugs. Well, really, the only, the only thing that changes, at least in the current thought, is that the you get access to like a 3D turnaround model. Well, we're still trying to figure out what to do for the UI of the new game because you want to make sure that it feels like new game. What what was that game? Was it like The Witcher or something where like you could just like look at 3D like turnaround of like literally every like object? I don't know because I never did that. <laughs> yeah, right. Right. When you obtain a new item, what should happen? Should we pause the game for the player and make a big damn deal out of it? Or should we just kind of be subtle about it and let them go on their way? Should there be a distinction between the first time you find something and every other time? But, but for instance, when you catch a bug for the first time, it could pull up that elaborate screen that's like, you got a pickle, and it, like... And this has been another evolving process because sometimes I think that we stop the player too much, but then every time we don't, people just ignore information and, and then don't know what to do. I don't want yeah. the thing that you go to when you catch a bug to feel like a pause screen. Uh, so in order to communicate what I'm saying, I'll 
Got out of the party. Well, yeah, I mean, we're always in communication, and that's why it's important that we be here, you know, all at once. And sometimes we get the whole team up in front of the board, but that's almost rare, really. It, it's funny because it's kind of arbitrary what gets the whole team interested, because the other day uh, I had gone to the board to just, like, to, to create a list of what accessories the characters would wear to help define them like what kind of hats and, and ties and whatnot. And like, everyone showed up. Like everyone had an opinion on what kind of hats our characters should wear. And it's, it's like both surprising and not surprising. And you can see the difference in, we're talking about what the UI should be for like a main sequence in the game. No one wants to touch it, but we talk about hats and, and it becomes a big group event, so. <laughs>I was actually in the School of Music, not in the, in the Game Dev School, uh, but one of my friends from high school had been on the team the year before, the Devil's Tuning Fork team. End of the year, my junior year, I was like, hey, are they doing that again this year? When we made Octodad, it was like kind of engineered to be in like the IGF. It was like, what? It was just like, like explicitly IGF bait. And in the beginning, there was, you were like an alien in its head doing that sort of like a men in black sort of situation, uh, and you were, uh, I think you were seeing the game first person through that kind of like view. The fact that we sort of landed on Octodad, like discovered it kind of, and it was like this sort of like, almost like, you know, very cohesive whole idea, like simple, straightforward, like obvious kind of, it's like, oh, okay. Eventually that became an octopus for some reason, and then, at one point, we decided that it would be funnier if, if that octopus was in the suit. Here's octopus in the suit, like wacky, like can't control, and, you know, like that, that, and then that that was so popular, like, I don't know, following that up is going to be hard to do. I guess it's really the colors. I, I understand. Like, it's a bit yeah. like, have this kind of, like, fly here, right? Only for about a month. Okay. Yeah. So you're the newest horse. Yes, <laughs> the youngest horse. Created a lovely quest for Warcraft. It seems like, you know, there's not really room for people to have, um, you know, too much disagreement with someone else. Like everyone gets along pretty well. I mean, we've definitely had uh, like personal issues with each other that lasted for years and a lot of arguments and. Uh, you know, personal strife here and there. And is able to talk about their problems because um, it's such a small space and there's only a few people, so you kind of have to get along <laughs> with each other. <laughs> but, uh, like, our quarterly reviews end up being more like family therapy almost because, you know, we, we do take the time to try to not let those bad thoughts or bad feelings or, or disagreements fester for too long. And we really do try to, you know, uh, think more not just the health of the company but the health of each other and make sure we're all you know living life and being happy. I mean I've always felt uh, very much a part of the team as a whole because we all kind of you know we all take input from each other about each of our individual disciplines and you know we're all kind of our own expert in our own field but then uh, when we have team discussions about things in the game you know, everybody's welcome to make comments. One of the tensions that existed in the very beginning was, uh, is this idea an idea that's going to uh, surpass Octodad? I don't think we expect our next game to do as well as that. Even though we think that it is better, I think it's, a be it's going to be a better game. There's just a time in which things weren't working as well as far as just like, getting along and, and trying to like figure out 
what the thing was that we were going to do. It was a time when the project we're on was very uh, different from the way it is now, and we kind of had to explode it all and start over. And it took a while for us to kind of gain back any um, confidence. We got to figure out a new thing to be doing. It turns out all eight of us have different ideas. And trying to like fight against that and then prove that we were actually good at this and not just uh, only lucky. It took a long time to figure out a game that we all were excited about making. I mean, there was no way we were ever gonna pick something from the start that would satisfy us. Like a lot of pitching and prototyping and like, you know, eventually landing on one idea that's kind of a combination of a bunch of ideas and then paring that down even more. Us being invested was the point. Like us finding a, a project we could agree on was the point because going on without agreeing on it meant a project we didn't believe in, or at least that someone didn't believe in. And because we believe very heavily in our team structure and that we are like equals who make creative choices for ourselves, how can you go forward without, like, without one of your own team? I would like this game to be better than Octodad. As we've released Octodad on newer and newer platforms and we have the funding to continue this project, it's less important that it be like a big success. Fans love Octodad. Like people tend to really like it, but we didn't get any critical acclaim for it. Like it needs to succeed, obviously, but to what degree has lessened. So I guess it would be nice to, you know, be a uh, you know, uh, gain that sort of recognition from from the the writer set, I guess. Of uh, yeah. I don't know, man. It's weird. It's weird uh, being in this position where it's like when I started out before school, I was like, I'm not going to be a businessman. I'm going to make video games. And here we are, uh, like uh, having a company and doing all that kind of stuff and being a businessman. We are all owners of this company. And if any one of us is really unhappy with the game we're making, we can't continue. Not really. Like we could force ourselves to for a while and then it would just explode again. Um, because one person would be left out, two people, however many people aren't happy with it would be left out. Because we wanted to make a studio and not just like everybody cash out and go do whatever they, I don't know. We, most of us wanted to keep working on it as a studio. In a small team like this, it's you really feel like you're contributing a lot because you are doing a lot of work. At a lot of other companies or jobs, you know, programmers don't necessarily have that much uh, creative input. So being able to be part of small discussions uh, certainly drives my motivation for making games. We're all just kind of fumbling through everything and being like, yeah, that's fine. It's fine that we just look like, you know, weirdos most of the time. Um, people seem to like it, so. When I was a kid and thinking about, I want to work for Pixar, in my head what that job entailed is a fantasy. It doesn't actually exist there. But working on an indie team, on a game like Octodad, for example, I get to do all of that. So in a, in a weird way, I didn't ex I essentially reached my childhood goals uh, of, you know, working on a story, making all the characters, animating them all, and telling a story. To some degree, like if you don't have, uh, e even if it's just like a minority of people who like hate what you're doing, like are you doing anything worth doing? If you don't have people who don't like it, like if everyone looks at it and is like, hmm, like that's, I feel like, the worst response that you can get. Or at least it's the one that I want the least. I'd rather them be like really excited or like really not like it. One or the other, because at least you're getting a response. Uh, 